Sir, you are muted, sir. I, I, did, I have never faced this, you know, for the first time. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I have never faced this type of problem. Do you know how many lectures I have done through? More than, uh, I think, more than uh, 50 lectures. More than 50 lectures I did uh, through the Zoom. This is the first time that I got this problem. I don't know if something happened. Computer is an all one. Oh, anyway, don't worry. How many minutes uh, we lost? Uh, we lost uh, nearly ten minutes. Right, we can get. There. Okay, so then I was uh, showing actual examples with regard to certain gaps. Hmm? So therefore, so likewise, I think you can go. So then go to what is this uh, gap three? There are no theoretical arguments. Again, a conceptual gap and also not empirical test type. What is that? The linkage or relationship between employee engagement and personal character. So likewise, gap four, uh, that is uh, what is the, the impact of hypohone, all right. Not, not, not being empirically test type. So that means as far as gap four is concerned, that is only an empirical gap is not a theoretical gap, you know, because there are studies done even in Sri Lanka. But uh, I mean, studies means there are theoretical studies. But the, the impact of high performance work practices on employee engagement has not been empirically tested in the Sri Lankan context, maybe in the international context. Then you can go to gap uh, five, no empirical evidence. Okay, then gaps uh, six again, no empirical evidence. That is about, you know, on employee job performance as an intervening variable. So I will today, you know, I will uh, discuss uh, certain aspects of uh, types of variables. Of course, you must have heard about, you must have listened to several lectures on, but briefly I will, distinct and briefly I will deal with, with some examples. Then gap seven, there is no empirical evidence about religiosity, high performance work practices, personal character, leadership, and work-life balance that significantly affect employee engagement in a nomological network or in a theoretical framework in the Sri Lankan context as well as in the international context. You know, that's a big gap. So therefore, this is, you know, Based on the gaps, this is what we have developed. Uh, this is called nomological network or simply theoretical framework or research framework. There might be differences, you know, among these terms, but at this time I consider this is theoretical framework for the research or nomological network, which was developed based on gaps. Gaps were identified based on literature, comprehensive literature, key research studies relating to the big concept, you know, the, 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 that is employee engagement, which is the main variable in which we were interested. Right. Okay, then uh, another example. This is a paper, you know, which has now more than, uh, I think, like, if my memory is correct, more than 205 citations, 
highly popular in the world. Green Human Resource Management, Simplified General Reflections. Normally, you know, many foreign people, you know, they, 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 they have a wrong attitude about Sri Lankan researchers. So therefore, you know, especially in management, in uh, law, in mathematics, in uh, social sciences, not in medical science, not in uh, natural sciences. When it comes to social sciences, including law and, you know, uh, including uh, mathematics, mathematics also. So normally, you know, the, uh, they don't really uh, appreciate what we have done. So therefore, in that context, you know, getting uh, more than 200 citations for one uh, article is a very big thing. Anyway, so therefore, uh, why did I uh, tell about that? You know, you should have a right attitude about this paper. You know, this is a serious paper, so that originally developed certain theoretical uh, formulations. When I was, you know, this, so this paper, originally, the original version I developed, and then later I, uh, you know, uh, got the assistance from my students because uh, he was doing a PhD in green human resource management under my supervision. So therefore, the original paper I gave to uh, Dr. Anton, who was then Mr. Anton, who is a lecturer, senior lecturer in uh, Southeastern University in Sri Lanka. So, <clears throat> Eastern University in Sri Lanka, not Southeastern, sorry. So, then uh, what he did is, you know, he, he expanded, you know, by using various references, various references. Anyway, our work was highly successful. And then, you know, uh, at that time, there were, you know, these, these, uh, these questions, we had these questions, you know, for these things, really, the, the papers also, you know, theoretical papers were rare, were rare. What is green? Why is green? What is green HRM? Why is green HRM important? What are the green human resource requirements? Then how to make HRM functions green? You know, so therefore, uh, you know, this is totally a conceptual paper. Right, so then these things, you know, originally we developed. Originally, we developed these are theoretical formulations because there were gaps. You know, no, no paper talking about this. No paper talking about these roads, you know. So, likewise. Okay, so therefore, this is this paper mainly has uh, conceptual gaps. Conceptual gaps. So, therefore, we ask these questions and then systematically. Also, by using existing literature, by using our logical beliefs, by using our creativity, so we develop uh, acceptable, adequate answers for all these questions. Accept the last one. Last one, of course, based on the uh, research findings done by other people, other people. But from one to six, we used our creativity, we used our logical beliefs, and also some literature, relevant literature. Okay, this is our recent work, you know. Uh, <clears throat> this is our, yet we have not finished this research. So now the identified research gaps in green human resource management. So we did a serious literature now I'm supervising one student who is doing, uh, you know, this research under, right, key studies. Okay, these are the key studies on green HR. The same way, can you remember, relating to the earlier paper, which is, earlier paper, which is on employee engagement. Same, same methodology we follow. We reviewed all the papers available to us. Key research studies then we are sure, we are sure what has been researched, what has been argued, what has been theorized, and what has been, what has not, what has not been theorized, what has not been empirical tested. You know, we are sure, we are sure. Nobody can challenge them. Nobody can deny our work then. 
So likewise, you know, dear students, doctor, students, I advise you, do the same thing. If you have a better approach, use that better approach. Otherwise, use this one, what I am suggesting. So then even, you know, we came to 2020 also. They are, of course, our own works. 2019, uh, Subai Ali Khan M, you know, so this is almost all the studies, all the studies, including several research studies done by myself and other my students. Okay, then we are, you know, based on all these things, we identified certain research gaps, certain research gap, and these are the research gaps. There are no theoretical argument and empirical evidence on the moderating effect of personal character on the relationship between green orientation of HRM and green attitude of the employee. And then gap two, there are no specific empirical evidence in the past research on the relationships. So likewise, these are the gaps. Even the review of similar papers and key meta reviews reveal that Previous researchers have not focused on mediating effects of green attitude. Okay, so then gap, gap four, then gap five, then gap six, then gap seven, gap eight. Okay, so how many gaps then? Eight gaps, you know, we'll find out. So therefore, simply, you know, you can't, you know, you can't write down these things simply. Or by referring to only two or three papers, you can't do that. You can't do that. So therefore, the best thing is do like this. Do like this. Then, you know, uh, regarding these things, you know, you can develop separate paper. Then after that, you can develop another paper. Another paper like this because you are supposed to publish several papers before you submit your thesis, final thesis. If you are very intelligent and capable, you can even publish, you know, you will be able to publish even 10 papers when you submit the research. You know, well, I directed certain students, you know, they were, they were successful in publishing even 10 papers, you know, at the, at the time of making Viva. Some people could that could publish five. Only one person could publish uh, four papers. All other you know students they could publish more than five. So when you when you when you are serious, you know, you will be you will be. I mean, you, you will feel interest in it. You know, it seems that this is a big work, but don't worry. For the first time, yes, this is difficult, maybe very difficult. Now it is raining and thundering. Anyway, I hope I will be able to. We have to respect the nature, but what to do? You know, sometimes the nature goes against us. What to do? We are not supposed to spoil the nature. We are supposed to respect the nature. Right, I think uh, this is enough. So likewise, you know, I can show you, you know, refer to all the papers. Any questions? Any questions? So what do you mean by con contextual gaps? That means there are, you know, there are no empirical gaps with regard to a certain thing, you know, a certain phenomenon or, you know, phenomena. Also, it's in simple certain concept that, you know, you want to study. Then there are no theoretical gaps also. But, you know, 
but there are no sri lankan studies and then you know if there are no sri lankan studies uh, there is an example of contextual gap assume that even there are sri lankan studies two or three but there are no uh, there are no studies with regard to for example railway station railway station masters uh, that is a contextual gap assume job performer of railway station masters you know say railway station masters are you right so then job performer of railway station masters sri lankan railway station masters there are uh, research studies done on performance job performance with regard to manager employees in manufacturing sector banking senior bank managers but there are no assume there are no studies with regard to job performance of uh, sri lankan railway station masters uh, that we can consider as a contextual gap so at least you must have a contextual gap then methodological gaps what do you mean by there are no instruments to measure you know there are no instruments to measure is it instruments right any questions then performance gaps you know i should include uh, performance gaps so what do you mean by performance gaps now performance gaps you know they they, they are they are applied applied you know problems they are relating to applied problems rather than you know uh, basic or pure problems i hope you know the difference between applied research and basic research what well, applied research studies you know they are done they are done to solve actual problems been faced by you know actual managers in actual organizations uh by then basic research studies what do you mean by basic research studies right you know okay let me performance gaps hmm? so i say you are interested in improving uh, productivity you know you are you know improving productivity of uh, medical personnel now in the context of controlling controlling a uh, corona case controlling corona so at the moment i say there are certain problems okay you are interested in controlling corona so then you have found out that there are certain areas you know uh, which have certain weaknesses certain weaknesses they are not uh, they are not working smoothly they are not uh, going uh, uh, in the way that is expected according to the plan uh, then there is a performance gap i think i uh related to my first lecture i dis i discuss certain example at least one example about a performance gap right okay so these are the so this is one you know one procedure you know one approach one one way of doing i mentioned previously yes okay i hope you are reading by yourself right then uh, another reflection problem statement and research questions need to be formulated from the identified gaps problem statement and research questions need to be formulated from the identified gaps so has the problem statement been clearly given is it loaded does it involve several research questions 
if it is broken down is it consistent with the objectives of the stand is it related to the background is it consistent with the title how research questions be specified you know specifically given are they consistent with the problem statement and the research objective are they researchable when reality and time give even are considered you know some people are very ambitious then they, they they have many research questions which they cannot practically you know answer are there several research questions at least two any questions hello are you all right yes sir yes sir yes sir yeah we are fine we are okay yes sir yes sir if you refer to you know question paper you know how can i you know if 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 i you know if i am teaching in a traditional class you know on the whiteboard i can show you all these things by taking one example but anyway there are a lot of examples in my research papers please refer to them if you are not interested in my research papers then find out some papers in which you are interested relating to your fields or relating to the concepts in which you are interested but remember that you know those papers should be good uh papers they must have written by qualified people because uh you are you are, you are learning sir. you want to learn sir, by reading the papers sir, so that can i ask the question sir should be of good quality sir yes yeah. sir you mentioned good quality um can you give us few few indicators to uh uh weight to measure it? i think because of this uh, raining all i am not hearing but anyway can you increase your voice uh, sir now you mentioned about good quality papers yeah, yeah um, good quality papers yeah but uh, what what, are, what is the criteria how 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 do we identify uh, this it, as it, a good it is not it is not the you know so normally you know it is, you know i am different from normal people i am different from normal people you know it doesn't means that good quality papers do not mean that you know the papers should be written uh, should be published in which journals in the world no even in local papers you know there are very good papers in, in local journals also there are very good uh, you know papers uh, even uh, in asian journals there are very good papers there are very good papers in some cases you know those so called big journals you know they don't accept you know conceptual papers uh, which were developed by asian people or which were developed by scholars in uh, the, uh, you know developing countries because they think that you know uh, they, they they are the people you know in developed countries they are the people uh, to develop theories then uh, you know scholars in developing countries they are the people to find out empirical evidence with regard to their theories so i don't accept uh, you know those things so therefore maybe you know i mean any recognized paper you know any journal recognized journal and any recognized author you know who is qualified who is really qualified qualified means uh, at least there must be a phd there must be a phd because you are reading for a phd you know? so therefore it is good to read papers you know which were written by scholars with phd but it doesn't means that there are no research papers you know having good quality which were written by people without phd there may be there may be some classic classic papers and uh, then if they are classic if they have been referred to by several authors even in foreign authors i mean by foreign authors by local authors they read them then they can be considered as quality you know papers that's why they have been referred to that's why they have been referred to 
Okay, so then the index, you know, many years, you know, this, you know, uh, when we were studying, when we were doing PhD, you know, there were no so-called index research journals. There were only referee uh, uh, journals and non-referee journals. So then we tried to, you know, publish papers in referee journals. Then later, you know, later, after even when, after I became professor, several years, uh, when, I, when I was reaching my next promotion, uh, the senior professor, then, you know, uh, during that time, we came to know that, we experienced that, there's another classification now, index journals, non-index journals, peer review journals, you know, index. Then, you know, the certain, uh, you know, classifications given by Australia, Australian universities, ABC, so like, you know, Normally, I don't care those things, but anyway, there are certain academics who, who do care. So therefore, you have, to, you have to depend on your supervisors, your supervisors, your supervisors. But as far as I am concerned, you know, there may be good papers published in local journals. There may be good papers published in non-index journals. There may be good papers published in even magazines. Okay, so therefore, you know, who is the author? You have to refer to, you know, who is the author? The author is a legend. Or author has been highly accepted internationally, at least locally. Locally, you know. You know, there are some people who achieved recognition internationally, but they have never achieved recognition locally. Also, no industry recognition locally. There are some people, you know, some authors who have achieved uh, industry recognition, local, who have achieved uh, local recognition, academically also, but they have not received international recognition. So it doesn't mean that their papers are of low quality now. But there are some scholars, of course, they have achieved international recognition, uh, local in the industrial recognition, also local academic recognition. Are you all right? Are you happy with my answer? Yes, 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 yes sir. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Also, uh, another, another thing, you know, respect the paper, you know, assume you find a paper and then you read that paper and then you understood fully that paper and then you are going to use certain things of that paper. Then respect that paper and then, you know, uh, give that due reference to that paper. Otherwise, you don't have virtue of respect. Otherwise, you don't have virtue of gratitude. You know, so then for such, I mean, I mean such people will experience the same thing. For example, at you, as you, you read, uh, you read one paper written by a local scholar. Then you used so many things from that paper, but you didn't give the due recognition. Then one day in future, one day in future, you will experience the same thing. Maybe one of your students or one of your peers, you know, or future researcher will refer to your paper, will use many things from your paper, but that researcher may assume doesn't give due recognition to your paper. Therefore, whatever, you know, which is you, which were, which was useful, which were useful, make sure, you know, Acknowledge them or acknowledge it in the new way. Right, conceptualization of the variables is a major driver of a good conceptual model. Conceptualization of the variables is a major driver of a good conceptual model. So, what is conceptualization? You must have learned. Now that's the process through which we specify precisely what we will mean when we use particular terms. According to Bobby, Professor Bobby, who wrote the book, you know, Practice of Social Research. If you have a chance of reading that book, please read it. At least some, some, some chapters. Chapter relating to conceptualization. Really, you know, it's worthy of reading. Then thus conceptualization of a variable is the process of specifying what the researcher will mean when using that variable. So if I use 
green is chare, then I have to specify what I will mean when I use that term. So if you use productivity, then you have to specify what you mean by that term. At least, uh, no, not at least, relate them to your research work. Why do we need to do that? I mentioned uh, for the first session also, in order to avoid confusion, also in order to avoid disagreement, Okay, so those working agreements will allow the researcher to work on the research questions to achieve the research objective. So what we define, you know, here the, you know, uh, you have to, you have to, you know, you, you should develop a nominal definition. That is called a working definition. Look at, you know, read the Bobby's uh, definition. The nominal definition is one that is assigned to a term in the midst of disagreement and confusion over what a term really means, the scientist specifies a working definition for the purposes of the inquiry. You know, very, you know, very, very good writing. Read it twice, thrice. Try to understand everything in the, you know, in this. The nominal definition is the one that is assigned to a term. So you refer to uh, some of my research papers that we have given working definitions. Then thus the nominal definition is the specific definition given by the researcher. Okay, in order to accomplish all the further purpose of achieving research objectives. It works until the research ends. For example, you know, this is an example. Labor management relationship is perceived degree of how well labor unions and managers in an organization feel. Uh, that is, you know, attitude part is there. Then behave. Then the behavior part also is there. Feel and behave towards each other. Uh, that's the nominal definition, a working definition. An example. So if you refer to research papers, you know, good research papers, you will find. Nominal definitions, right. A good conceptual model is the foundation to the research. So what a conceptual model, all these things, I think you must have read. So therefore I will save the time. So the one theorizes the relationship among the several factors that have been identified as important to the uh, problem, you know. So like, you know, okay, for example, what are the determinants of employee productivity? in Sri Lankan banking sector. And then you have to identify several factors and then you have to theorize the relevant relationship among the factors. Uh, that you know you have to show uh, by using a figure. Uh, that figure is considered as a conceptual model. Logical conceptual framework or research model. Okay, discussing the interrelationship among the important variables that are deemed to be integral to the dynamics of the managerial situation being investigated. I'm showing again the, this paper, you know, so-called big journal, you know, published in a very big journal, uh, Social Science Citation Index, here. Yeah. So look at, you know, this is our framework, theoretical framework, this one. So these are called independent variables. This is uh, moderating variable, sorry, intervening variable. This is the uh, dependent variable. So therefore you are supposed to label the way relevant variables, right? If you do 
scientific uh, research. I, you know, using hypothetical deductive approach. If you use a qualitative study, it's, st it's still conceptualization is applicable, but there is no conceptual framework. Right, so these things, you know, these are the features, you know, the sacred features. Uma Sekaran, you know, uh, well-known author in research methodology. Please refer to uh, latest edition or maybe uh, edition, uh, third edition, fourth edition, fifth edition, it's okay. Right. Then, so what do you mean by a variable now? You may have, you know, you may listen, you may have listened to several lectures, but let me finish this one. So what do you mean by a variable? It's a simple, you know, simply a symbol or a concept that can assume any one of a set of values, at least two values, good or bad, you know, uh, white or black, high or uh, low. So like uh, at least two values. So normally maybe five values, you know, very low, low, uh, moderate, then high, then very high. Right. <clears throat> so an example of variable relating to persons. You know, the, the, the variable is a logical grouping of two or more attributes that are characteristics or levels, levels of persons. So there can be variables relating to persons, there can be variables relating to things, there can be variables relating to events. Things, events. An example of a variable relating to persons is gender. That has two attributes such as male and female. Then an example of a variable relating to things, that is profit. There are several attributes such as high profit, profit, low profit, or very high profit, high profit, moderate profit, low profit, very low profit. Then five, five attributes or five values. Then having a sales training is an example of a variable relating to an event with values such as extensive training, then non-extensive training, or even very extensive training, extensive training, moderately extensive training, uh, lowly extensive training, very lowly extensive training. So likewise, you can have five attributes or five values or five levels. Okay, so then the DV and IV, you know, a dependent variable, independent variable. Then you know the mediating variable or no moderating variable here. So what is moderating variable? So which has a significant contingent effect on the independent variable dependent variable relationship. So it modifies the expected, expected relationship between the IV and DV. So if the expected relationship does not become true due to the presence of a third variable, or that third variable will be the moderating variable. We will do certain exercises. I will show you. But let me uh, tell now one example. Uh, right, assume, now I am, okay, now, now I am doing a lecture through the Zoom. You must have, uh, you must have had your lunch. Did you get a heavy lunch or light lunch? You know, so the, then, then uh, one variable is, one variable is the nature of the lunch or degree of heaviness of the lunch. Let me, or, uh, narrow down here. Heaviness of the lunch is one variable. Then, uh, then uh, sleepiness, sleepiness of the learner, sleepiness of the candidate, you know, the, the, the student is another variable. Another variable. Okay, there are two variables now. One is the heaviness of the lunch. The other one is uh, degree of feeling sleepy in the classroom. Or oh, now uh, in the Zoom, on the Zoom, degree of sleepiness and the uh, degree of heaviness of the lunch. 
what is the relationship can you theorize can you theorize is there a okay how do you how do you theorize a relationship between two variables there are Post certain ways you know positively are, co yes positively correlated sir right positive okay you can okay you can you can you can write you are good okay you can you, know, you can theorize that there's a positive relationship between heaviness of lunch and degree of feeling sleep in the classroom right uh, what i am asking is what i am asking is how do you theorize simply telling one to one sentence is not sufficient when you do the research you have to have at least one paragraph you know one rush you know you have to have rationally for the for the for theorizing otherwise it is not acceptable with regard to at, at least you know with regard to the very you know relationship between two variables at least you must have one paragraph not one sentence that is called rationally based on rationally you have to develop otherwise that is not you know acceptable earlier earlier there was something called hunch or intuition based on hunch or intuition you can develop a hypothesis or relationship but nowadays it is not acceptable so therefore in order to develop in order to do theorizing between two variables you have to use previous empirical studies you have to find out previous research studies which you know talk about relationship between these two variables may be positive may be negative or uh, you can use them according to so and so you know according to so and so there there is a positive relationship between a and uh, b assume the two variables are a and b also according to uh, so and so it was found that it was you know, a negative relationship or positive relationship was found between uh, a and b so likewise you know using previous empirical studies that is one source another one theory you know using arguments directly related arguments from where you can find from the conceptual papers and also from the textbooks from the textbooks from the conceptual papers you can you know develop arguments you can find not uh, yes you can find argument are then arguments then previous empirical studies then general theories you know general theories you have to use general theories maybe system theory maybe ao aom theory maybe uh, institutional theory i don't know they are you know depending on the uh, concept depending on the subject there can be different you know common uh, theories that you can use common theories you know i must say according to my experience if i develop you know if i develop a certain theoretical framework by using common theories you know most i mean almost for all the you know the research frameworks you know it was possible for me to establish so assume so for such uh, theoretical frameworks which were developed by using general theories i uh, formulated assume 10 hypotheses almost all the ten hypotheses you know got confirmed got you know accepted so therefore use of a general theory is a good advantage it gives a real base support to theorizing this is not an undergraduate research this is not a masters level research you are going to do a doctoral level research okay so then uh, let me show okay now okay i will finish the my example and then i will show you one or two actual examples uh right okay now, now we can theorize that there's a positive relationship between heaviness of the lunch and the uh, sleepiness in the classroom sleepiness in the classroom the more the, the the heavier the lunch the more the person is going to feel the sleepiness okay the more the person is going to uh, feel the sleepiness sleepiness in other words when the degree of heaviness of the lunch gets increased the degree of feeling sleepiness in the classroom tends to increase gets increased or will increase 
Right. However, okay, okay, now according to the theory that is so, assume actually you had a heavy lunch. You know, before this lecture, you had a heavy lunch. Then according to the theory, you must feel sleepy. You must feel sleepy. But you did not feel sleepy. You did not feel sleepy. Uh, then why? Why that theory didn't work? Why, why that theoretical theorization did not work? Right, the answer is a moderating variable. Okay, for the answer for why is a moderating variable. Maybe a set of two moderating variables, maybe three, but at least the you know, due to existence of one moderating variable. Can you think of what? Can you give an example of such a moderating variable according to our example now? Heaviness of the lunch and sleepiness uh, in the classroom. So in an AC environment? Sorry? In a, in a listening to in an AC environment? AC environment? Uh, oh, attending the class in a... Yeah. Uh, interest subject. Uh, yeah. AC, interest. If you say, okay. Uh, yeah, did, did I hear clearly? AC environment. Did you mention AC environment? Right. Yes, sir. sir, sir. Right. If you take same exact. Right. If you take AC environment, okay. If you take AC environment, that is not a moderating variable. That is going to be an intervening variable, a mediating variable. Because the theory happens, you know, the, the theory have because of AC. You can't say that you know you did not. I believe. I believe that. Assume you 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 know uh, you got a heavy lunch, and then uh, you 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 felt sleepy, you know you felt sleepy, and uh, maybe uh, the AC also has contributed to that. AC environment also has contributed to that. So normally because of AC, I don't think that uh, you don't you got heavy lunch, and then you didn't feel, feel sl sleepy because of AC environment. Normally, AC environment tends to make the person, the student, more sleepy or sleepy. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Yes. According to general observation, okay? I, I haven't read any paper uh, done by any one empirical paper or I haven't read any textbook with regard to that, but this is my logical belief. So forget about my logical belief. This is about my observation because we were in AC environment. Therefore, based on our observation, we can tell that. Sir, okay. how about liveliness of the presenter? Yes, yes, okay, right. Now tell me again, you know. And liveliness of the presenter. Oh, lively, liveliness of the person. Okay, let me say interesting, interesting nature or seriousness of the topic. Yeah. One moderative variable is seriousness of the topic. Assume you had a heavy lunch, but you didn't feel sleepy because assume uh, you know that uh, based on this lecture, there are going to be two uh, exam question papers. Sorry, two exam uh, questions. So therefore, this lecture is very serious. Even though you had heavy lunch, you know, when, uh, when it reminded you about the two exam questions, you didn't feel sleepy. Uh, that is a moderative variable. You know, according, according to the theory, if you have heavy lunch, you must feel sleepy in the classroom. But you did not actually. Why? Because of interesting nature of the lecture, because of seriousness of the lecture. Uh, that, you know, those are examples of moderative variables. Okay, then intervening variables. Uh, uh, I have given another way. Another example, right? Training of production workers will result in higher productivity. Normally, you know, you can use empirical evidence, you can use arguments, you can use logical beliefs, you can use general theories to theorize like this. Okay, now, uh, what, how, what are the ways of, you know, developing a rationale uh, for a relationship? Using previous studies, one way or one source. Then using arguments from textbook and conceptual papers another source. Then using general theories, another source. Then using logical beliefs, because you are an intelligent person. 
you can use logical beliefs you know i had to use certain logical beliefs you know when developing certain hypotheses because there were no single uh, i mean there were no studies found so then you have to use logical beliefs you know if there are no general theories if there are no previous empirical studies if there are no conceptual conceptual papers giving arguments if there are no textbooks giving arguments then you are compelled to use your logical beliefs you have to respect that you are an intelligent person you have certain amount of intellectually intelligence and then you can use your logical beliefs okay right but normally normally you know uh, because you are a doctoral student uh, you know if you use only your logical beliefs uh, most likely it is not going to be accepted but once you uh, you know became a phd uh, then it is okay but still uh, you know you have not been given that license you are regarded as a student for the phd you may have many years of experience relating to a job you may have obtained many promotions in the industry but uh, you know those things may have may be useful may be useful but yet you have not obtained a doctoral degree so therefore you are a navy or you are a stranger to the doctoral journey therefore you must be humble and then you have to you know use general theories uh, empirical studies arguments be given by experts in the field to support your rationality for the theoretical framework right okay then but you know okay the okay, now there is a positive relation between two variables but this positive relationship becomes untrue for trainees who have no motivation to learn and becomes true only for trainees who have motivation to learn thus motivation to learn becomes the moderating variable absence of motivation to learn variable uh, cancels the expected positive relationship between the two variables did you understand can you understand this this slide fully okay what is the theorized relationship between the two variables training and productivity if we increase the training then we can expect increased productivity but it did not happen it did not happen to a group of people who did not have motivation to learn but it happened to another group of people who had motivation to learn uh, that means if there is no motivation to learn this theorized relationship does not happen or uh, that means motivation to learn is a moderate when it comes to uh, no motivation to learn when no motivation to learn comes to the scenario then the expected relationship doesn't happen that will cancel the expected relationship all right understood yes sir right now intervening variable or mediating variable uh, that is you know remember you know never forget still many people even some uh, you know uh, surprisingly some supervisors also they don't understand this one what is that also they are not aware about time dimension that's a tummy you know there is a time dimension uh, for you know with regard to or with an intervening variable temporal value temporal value to the uh, to the uh, what is this an intervening variable yes so it is the variable that it is the variable that surfaces at a time too as a function of as a function of the iv independent variable it helps it help, helps to explain the relationship between the iv and the dv you see the first independent variable occurs then uh, in the intervening variable occurs then the dependent variable occurs for example uh, independent variable that is training so we give training so that occurs or activates at time 1 then learning within the learners occurs at time 2 uh, that is intervening variable mm -hmm. then the productivity improvement you know the pro improved productivity will occur at time 3 
okay there are, there are three variables mm-hmm. what are the three variables training then learning then productivity because of training you know uh, productivity will get increased how does it increase let me ask this question how does training increase productivity the answer is the intervening variable the answer is the intervening variable that's why it you know it works as a function of the independent variable not 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 the function of the dependent variable Right. Let me give you, okay, training, okay, due to more training, employees' competence will increase. Due to more training, when we increase training, employees' competence will increase. Competence includes basically what? Knowledge and skills. Due to the increased competence, employee productivity will get increased. Employees' competence will in- explain how more training affects employee productivity. Here, employees' competence will be the intervening variable. All right. So therefore, these things, you know, it gives the foundation and all these. Please read. Hypothesis can be derived from the conceptual model. Right now, let me show you some actual examples. Okay, oh, we got here now. Oh, this one, very useful paper, right? To explain many things. Okay, now uh, you can you can find you know identified research gaps you can find. Then based on research gaps, you know we develop uh, problem statement, the research questions, and then objectives. Okay, objectives, right? Then this is the, the uh, theoretical framework. So in order to develop theoretical framework and hypothesis, you know, we use various things, you know, previous imperial studies, arguments, and all these. Uh, this is, you know, this is uh, a general theory. Theoretical assumptions derived from justice theory. You know, justice theory, pay for performance and all these things, then employee engagement. So you can see. <laughs> what is the hypothesis? The higher the uh, high, you know, the, the, the high performance work uh, practices, the higher the employee engagement. So this one, you know, justice theory we used. Then religiosity and employee engagement. So likewise, you know, please read Mangala Sutra, even, you know, certain uh, religious things. Uh, then, uh, you know, this ABC model, another one, general theory we used. ABC model. So likewise, you know, please read, you know. I will save the time and, you know, rather than listening to what I am telling, if you read, definitely you will get readable, understandable. What has been given is readable. What has been given is understandable, I am sure. Okay, so you, you know, all these hypotheses or the theoretical framework, the hypothesis, all, you know, in order to develop, we use empirical studies, arguments, general theories and logical beliefs especially logical beliefs you know had to be utilized in order to uh, develop a good rationale for the relationship between personal character and employee engagement because hardly we found uh, previous studies previous arguments uh, where then we had to use logical beliefs our beliefs uh, this is another theory you know system general system theory this is a very useful theory you can see here you know these are the independent variables they are really according to general system theory inputs and this is the mediating variable so according to general system theory that is process 
Then the output, you know, what is the output? That is the DV, employee job performance. You know, so please read, then you will, you know, you will understand that how I have, you know, we have used this general system theory to justify this model, this theoretical framework. You know, all these uh, three general models will give a very good stand to this, this, this theoretical framework. Then it is, it is more likely that the hypotheses are going to be proven going to be supported, forget about proving, but substantiating, supported by using at least our empirical data. Forget about empirical data of future researchers. At least uh, based on empirical data that we gather for our you know, testing purpose. Okay, all right. Now uh, let me give you an example. I mean, exercise, not an, not an example. Normally, you know, in the classroom rating uh, setting, I give this uh, you know this set of exercises. Let me this this. Uh, Uh, the exercises. <clears throat> now I am having a problem of. I think I, 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 I forgot to get that. Mm, I have to. Okay, here, yeah, right. <clears throat> Taking time, what to do? Okay, let us, uh, can you do, okay. Simply take uh, two minutes and can you do this one? The human resource manager is of the belief that appropriate supervision, training and right discipline management will increase the production level of the factory workers in Puja company. Identify and label the variables as dependent or independent, giving a brief rationale in this case. Diagram the relationships. Take a piece of paper and do, you know, by yourself. We should not take much time. The human resource manager is of the belief that appropriate supervision, training and right Discipline management will increase the production level of the factory workers in Puja company. Then you are supposed to identify and label the relevant variables. First, tell me how many variables here? Appropriate oh. supervision is one variable. Three variables. Three. Training, yes. training, training is another variable. Training is another variable. Right, discipline. Oh. Yes, right. Discipline management. Okay, right or wrong. Okay, let us take uh, discipline management simply by by uh, ignoring the adjective. Discipline management. So there are three variables. 
now can you can you sir in the, the level, level, sir, yes. in the same vein then we can remove the appropriate tools you know it is supervision right. training very much, very and good. management why right. you are you are correct you are correct appropriate also we can delete yes you got the point why right. Supervision, training, discipline, management. But when we when you theorize, uh, we have to use adjectives, okay? Because uh, if you are going to develop a directional hypothesis uh, rather than a non-directional hypothesis, then adjectives are important. Uh, supervision, training, and discipline management. Right? Can you develop a theory among these three variables? Simple theory. Simple theoretical framework that gives the network of uh, relationships among only three variables. Because you know, under under scientific research, you know, we purposefully demarcate our reality. We purposefully concentrate only on certain variables, not all the variables which are occurring in the reality. When we when we, when we do a qualitative research. We have to deal with all the possible variables in the reality in order to find an acceptable answer for the research problem. However, when you use scientific method, we are purposefully, you know, to ignore certain yeah. variables. Purposefully, we select certain variables. Based on only those selected variables, we develop the theoretical framework. So therefore, we do demarcating, we do limiting, and then objectivity. You know, we create a kind of objectivity based, you know, uh, about the about the reality, about the reality. We construct purposefully that has limitations, of course, which we will have to write down under limitations. Why? However, we have to do that. We have to do that. For example, you know. If we find a vaccination for corona, then in order to test the impact of vac vaccination, we have to control many things in the reality. We cannot consider all the things, all the things, because we want to uh, the, concentrate only on two variables, the vaccination and the, uh, you know, uh, curing the, curing, curing corona or attacking corona, two things. But we can expand, you know, we can do many, many research studies so as to include all the possible variables, at least a greater number of variables in order to make sure that our medicine will work, surely. Right. Okay, now what is, what is DV then? What is the DV? DV is the variable in which you are primarily interested in. Production. That is the variable, the behavior of which gets changed because of another variable. Production level of the factory. Production. Production level. Production level? All right. Okay. That's another way. All right. That's another variable. Thank you very much. I forgot. Production That's level. another variable. Production level. Right. So then in this scenario, there are four variables now. Production yeah. level. So assume. We can label, we can consider production level as the or productivity of production as the dependent variable. Uh, that, then that is the variable in which primarily we are interested in. That is the variable we want to improve. So assume you know currently we are not happy with the uh, current level of production. So then we want to improve that production. Uh, that means there is a performance gap in our company. Uh, then you know we, we we consider we want to consider what are the determinants the determinants because we want to increase the current level of production in order to do that we have to decide determinants but we are not going to consider so many determinants we want to consider serious determinants major determinants then we can manipulate them rather than concentrating on so many variables can you remember principles of parsimony in scientific research? There's something called principles of parsimony. You know, 
in order to in increase the current level of production, there may be so many variables, even maybe 20 variables, we may be able to find out. If you are very intelligent, you will be able to find out more than 20. More than 20 by using maybe a Fisher diagram or Fish diagram or anything. You will be able to find out many causes. Many, you know, dependent with independent variables. Anyway, right. Then the supervision, training, and discipline, we can consider as independent variables, yes. Okay, now the answer. So I missed one, okay? I missed one. Supervision, training. Uh, what I missed is uh, discipline management. Discipline management. So you can add another one. Discipline management here. Okay, right. Okay, now another exercise. A researcher was assigned with the task of finding the effects of management attitudes to union and management beliefs about workers on labor management relationship in manufacturing firm engaged in printing industry. What would be the dependent variable or what would be the independent variable and why? Only two variables. Management attitudes to union. One variable. Management beliefs about uh, workers. Labor management. Ah, there is another variable, no? There is another variable. Labor management, management attitudes labor management. to union, one variable. Management beliefs about workers, another variable. And then labor, labor management, management, management relationship is another variable, yes. In this simple scenario also, there are three variables. Right, what would be the dependent variable? Labor management relationship. Labor management, Labor management relationship, yes. So therefore, because of uh, management attitudes to union and management beliefs about workers, the labor management relationship tends to behave. So therefore, labor management relationship is shaped, is impacted by management attitudes to union and management beliefs about workers. So therefore, they are Latter two variables are independent variables. The former is the dependent variable, yes. Let me give a somewhat more complex one. All right, okay, go to this one. Read it. and try to do it. What is the DV, what is the IV, and what is the moderating variable? What would be the moderating variable? Of course, you know, if there are previous studies, then of course, based on those studies, you can develop that. You will be able to identify what is dependent, what is independent, what is moderating. Assume that there are no arguments, there are no previous empirical studies, there are no, you know, uh, general theories. Uh, then what you have to do, you know, you, you have two options there, two sources, one is punch, or your intuition, that is six cent, you know, uh, six six cent, you know, high in Indri in single, your intuition, 
but normally that is not acceptable acceptable to many researchers nowadays many examiners are then logical beliefs now use your logical beliefs and determine which one is the moderating one sir so i think it is economic satisfaction sir right okay economic satisfaction no no superior subordinate relationship that's right this is one variable leadership is size of production supervisors another variable superior subordinate relationship superior subordinate relationship that is another my variable. moderate variable moderate variable right okay then let me give my answer superior subordinate relationship is the dependent variable as it is the primary variable of interest because in the exercise that has been specified the primary variable of interest to the research is superior uh, subordinate relationship so you know this is the variable in which the research is primarily interested so that means this is the variable that the researcher wants to enhance or wants to improve or wants to create if there is no at all then wants to create if there is to certain extent then wants to enhance right so then okay then uh, the independent variable would be leadership style of the production supervisors because it will influence the superior subordinate relationship then what is the moderating variable economic satisfaction economic satisfaction yes now you have to explain how how it moderates as it will have a contingent effect on the relationship between the leadership styles and the superior subordinate relationship it is argued that when leadership styles is more democratic there will be more favorable superior subordinate relationship however this will be true when production workers are economically satisfied when workers are not economically satisfied superior subordinate relationship will not become favorable even though production supervisors leadership styles are democratic you see this is my answer based on my logical beliefs make sure you you also can understand <coughs> it makes sense to you does it make sense to you you know when when leadership style is more democratic right you know if we develop a kind of relationship between leadership style and uh what is this uh, superior subordinate relationship when the leader's style becomes democratic what does it mean the leader respects the ideas of the subordinates then the leader you know invites ideas from the subordinates then the leader doesn't make uh, you know decisions on his own or on his, on her own making subordinate satisfied dissatisfied or frustrated or stunned or surprised uh, therefore democratic leadership if there is democratic leadership there can be higher level of superior subordinate relationship uh, that is how we have to theorize but you know okay assume we had you know we had a leader who followed democratic leadership but he did not improve a uh, superior subordinate relationship now the question why why did a democratic leadership followed by our leader you know not improve his relationship with subordinate uh, the answer is the moderate and uh, that is you know economic satisfaction you know uh okay even even we can we can test in this way you know we can have two groups 
you know one group uh, uh, economically workers are satisfied another group economically workers are not satisfied then democratic leadership you know improved uh, superior uh, you know superior subordinate relationship you know in the group you know where workers are economically satisfied but it did not happen in the group where workers are not economically satisfied democratic leadership did not improve superior subordinate relationship in the group where workers are not economically satisfied and uh, that means this theorization holds true to one group what is that group workers who have economic <laughs> satisfaction but it doesn't true or doesn't hold true to the other group of workers who don't have economic satisfaction now that means when there is no economic satisfaction people don't care you know even though the leader follows you know democratic leadership he asks, he asks uh, ideas and all these things he respects uh, the ideas of the workers but you know workers are not economically satisfied they have a big problem of economy therefore they don't care about you know this uh, good leadership style you know so they 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 they, they believe that they have been uh, economically oh, they 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 are they have been exploited our supervisor doesn't do uh, you know a, a, any work to improve our salaries our you know the yes basically salaries economic satisfaction uh, is concerned basically with uh, you know uh, salaries the value you know salary increments the you know the value of the salary and the number of salary increments and the value of the salary increment maybe maybe uh, incentives if there are yes are you all right uh, sir uh, i need to raise a question okay uh, shouldn't it work as if uh, now even if a particular employee is unhappy dissatisfied due to the economic uh, status if the uh, still even if that is the case if the leadership style is positive uh, won't the relationship be healthier so in that case leadership style becoming a uh, mediating uh, variable oh ah, yeah okay if you have you know if you have good logical uh, beliefs uh, you know you can even develop another one. yes another theoretical framework where uh, one is uh, working as an intervening variable can you tell me again you know so that means that uh, uh, that is for an example there is a particular employee who is unhappy with the uh, economic state okay. but however if the leadership style is uh, the supervisor's leadership style is a is a healthy uh, style the relationship with the supervisor will be a positive one even this economic state being not very healthy so therefore the leadership style becomes a mediating variable no 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 uh, lead, leadership style no 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 then no 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 <clears throat> okay <clears throat> right so normally okay uh, now now okay we want to establish hmm, we want to establish uh, a kind of uh, you know relate i mean we want to establish a certain variable as a moderating variable or as an intervening variable for that hmm, definitely there must be two variables one is dependent variable the other one is independent variable okay first you know before 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 thinking of the moderating variable or before thinking of the intervening variable we have to establish a relationship with that may be positive that may be negative between the iv and the dv you know that we have to do that then later you know we we cannot consider you know may, maybe according to research you know data analysis and all these things there may be another variable new variable which you have never thought But anyhow you know that you know because uh, now we are going to establish uh, the moderating nature of a variable or an intervening nature of a variable to establish that there must be a previous condition to be met that means there must be two variable between 
those two variables, there must be an established relationship. Uh, that may be positive, that may be negative. So if you use democratic leadership and superior subordinate relationship, then democratic leadership is the leadership style. You know, democratic leadership style we can consider as the IV. Then the so, superior subordinate relationship is the DV. Then we establish a relationship that, you know, a positive relationship between the two variables. An intervening variable may be like this. Uh, democratic leadership, you know, democratic leadership occurs at time one, and then intervening variable should occur at time two. Then the superior subordinate relationship should occur at time three. Then the intervening variable, you know, works as a function of the leadership style, not as a function of the dependent variable, normally. Can you think of another? You can suggest if you want to. Leadership style, right? Then uh, maybe uh, collective decision making. Okay, le democratic leadership style, uh, worker participation, right? Democratic leadership style will lead to worker participation, increased worker participation, which will lead to superior, increased superior subordinate relationship. Then worker participation can be considered as an intervening variable. But the economic satisfaction here, you know, the, that is a moderating variable. But anyway, I really appreciate your question. Sir, uh, can I have a moment, sir? Yes. So, uh, suppose if the, the dependent variable is the productivity of the workflow, then perhaps we can consider the economic satisfaction as the independent variable and the uh, leadership as the why labeling right labeling if you change you know by changing the dependent variable you you, you can you know okay relation you know the labeling you can change no problem but let me okay there's no exact labeling right there's no exact labeling this is you know how you know this is you know what i what i i mean presented is according to uh, my reasoning according to my reasoning but let me give okay you can have your own reasoning and then you can develop a network of relationship among the variables but normally when you when when we follow the approach that i mentioned previously for finding out you know relationships and all these you know uh, sorry finding out empirical gaps theoretical gap all these then you have sufficient evidence to lay you know to do this labeling accurately however however make sure that you know, you have right logical beliefs or previous empirical studies to support your label. Then no problem, don't worry. No problem. But first, first determine the primary variable in which you are interested. Eh? Otherwise, you will be in trouble. The primary variable in which you are interested, uh, first, you determine that. Normally, that should be a more important variable. For example, you know, try to, you know, employee productivity, job performance, labor management relationship. Uh, they are, you know, good examples of DVs for many studies. Job performance is a DV for many studies. Or perhaps profits, you know, profits, financial performance, organizational, you know, performance. Right, okay then. Uh, but now let us go to this one. Uma Seker and uh, example. I took this from Uma Seker. You can, you know, you take three minutes and then do yourself.
okay now <clears throat> A visitor to a factory observes that the workers in the uh, packing department have to interact with each other to get their jobs done. Okay, so then interaction is one variable here. The more they interact, the more they seem to tend to stay after uh, hours. So then staying after hours, another variable. Then go to the local pub together for a drink. Uh, going to the local pub for a drink, another variable. Then, however, the women, women, women packers, even though they interact with the others as much as the men, do not stay late and visit the pub after work hours. Pub, you know, is there is something called in developed countries, you know, pub. You know, you can you you where you can you know, take liquor and all, drink liquor and related things. Okay, all right? Yes, right, okay then, uh, I hope that you have done your work. Now compare your answer with my answer. Interaction, independent variable. Staying after hours, intervening variable. Gender, moderating variable. Visiting the pub, dependent variable. Uh, this is the explanation. What is the explanation? The more workers interact with each other, the more they seem uh, to tend to stay after hours and visit the park. Interaction will influence the staying after hours. That will influence the visiting the park. Therefore, interaction will be the independent variable, while visiting the park will be the dependent variable. Staying after hours will ex help explain or will assist to explain further the relationship between the, the IV and the DV. IV is the interaction and the DV is the visiting the park. The variable of staying after hours surfaces as a function of the independent variable of the interaction. Thus, staying after hours will be the intervening variable. However, the relationship between the interactions and the visiting the pub does not hold true for female workers. It is true only for male workers. Thus, gender will be the moderative variable that modifies the originally expected relationship between interaction and visiting the park. The relevant schematic diagram is given below. All right. Are you all right? According to my experience, most of the people can't do this. But anyway, don't worry. After this, I hope you will be able to do. Right. Okay, then let us go to any questions before going to another exercise. Big silence. Yes, sir. Okay, then shall we go to next another exercise? This one.
the manager of H Company observes that the morale, the morale, okay, no, not the morale, yes, the morale of employees in her company is low. What is morale, you know, collective enthusiasm of, you know, employees as a group. The morale of employees in her company is low. She thinks that if the working conditions, the pay skills, and the vacation benefits of the employees are bettered, made, made, made better, the morale will improve. She doubts, though, that increasing the pay skills is not going to raise the morale of all employees. Her guess is that those who have good side incomes will just not be turned on. That means motivated, uh, you know, uh, turned on by higher pay. However, those without side incomes will be happy with increased pay and their morale will improve. Can you identify the variables in this scenario? What are the variables? Then how many variables? Before labeling, you have to identify the variables involved. Morale of the employee. Morale of the employee. Okay, morale of the employee, one variable. Another variable? Working, Working condition. condition. Morale of the employee, one variable. Working, Working condition. Working condition. Working conditions, another variable. Pay scale. Vacation benefits. Vacation okay, scales and other variables. Side income. Okay, the vacation, vacation benefits is another variable. Right, vacation benefits another variable. Then side income. Side yes, income. Side, income. Side, income. side income. Right, side income. Side income. Right, side income. Another variable. Right, correct. Then, at least another variable. Happy with increased pay. Depending on your intellectual, you know, reasoning ability, one can find five, one can find uh, six, one can find seven even. You know, there are some people who can uh, see the reality by using several glasses because they have a broad understanding. But there are some people who have a narrow understanding. Maybe they see the reality by using only two or three glasses. Happy, happy can be happy. Happiness, yes, happy yes. thing. Very good. Happiness is another variable, correct. Happiness is another variable. You can add another variable. One or two, but okay, this is not the time. This is enough. Right, now can you label? Now listing is over. Then can you label them in the above situation? Then they explain the relationship among the variables. Then diagram the relationship among the variables. Then what might be the problem statement or problem identification for the situation? Then formulate five different hypotheses and the alternative hypothesis for each null hypothesis. Even I can ask some questions, you know, develop some research questions, specific research questions, then formulate uh, research objectives. Right. <clears throat> I will give you one minute. In the normal classroom, you know, interestingly, we can do that. But to, to the Zoom, you know, difficult. In the normal class, normally I am I, I am near the whiteboard you now by using whiteboard. So we have to take increased pay as well, isn't it? To link with happiness. Increasing the pay scale, okay, pay scale, we can write increasing pay scale, okay. Here we have as a variable, you mean uh, 
uh, another variable uh, to link with happiness increased pay all right okay right then that means the pay, pay becomes uh, an independent variable happiness becomes the, dep the dependent variable okay in that way correct correct in that way but now this is in one situation this is in one situation assume you know this is uh, this is a selected reality this is a selected reality and then in this selected reality assume now there are uh, how many variables one two three four five six there are six variables now right if you if you position these six variables in one situation then how can you position them then if you if uh, then if you can position them in the correct way then you can develop a network of network of relationships then from them you can develop hypotheses which then you can test by using by collecting data actual data empirical data right okay then let me show my answer working conditions independent variable pay independent variable vacation benefits independent variable morale dependent variable side incomes moderate variable happiness intervening variable with this help you know can you develop the diagram working conditions i will pay i will and vacation benefits i will then one side you know together you can have these three so is it uh, is it possible to take the happiness uh, for the dependent variable moral plus happiness is the dependent no, no problem you can but you are you are you are your rationality should be you know acceptable then no problem you can develop you know you can consider happiness as an intervening variable or as a moderating variable what you have to support by using empirical studies previously done or by using arguments taken from conceptual papers or textbooks by using a general theory at least one general theory or by using at least by using your logical beliefs but logical beliefs yeah? right now let me show you this is my answer working conditions vacation benefits pay you know so they are independent mm -hmm. variables then morale of the employees dependent variable then working conditions you know uh, positively affects morale of the employees then vacation benefits positively you know that variable you know even though s you know there are, there is here we can consider this as one variable so therefore the variable of vacation benefits positively relates to morale of employees that is one you know then then the pay pay uh, relates to for, you know happiness then happiness relates to morale of the employee pay occurs at time 1 happiness occurs at time 2 then morale of the employees occurs at time 3 then the happiness has a temporal value temporal value it work you know value it works as a function of the iv that is pay when we increase the pay the happiness of the employees will get increased because of that the morale of the employees will get increased so therefore this works as a mediate you know if you ask right uh why or, or not why really normally we don't use why here how how does pay increase morale of the employees the answer pay does increasing morale of the employees through increase happiness or simply happiness increase pay will increase morale of the employees through the increased happiness Okay, then what is side income that serves as a 
that works as a that has been positioned as a moderating variable in this theoretical framework. So this is are we assuming that working conditions and vacation does not contribute to happiness? If you want, you can. No problem. If you, if you want to uh, have a link, you know, between vacation benefit and happiness, you can have. No problem. Or even or, or your, your happiness, you know. In, in fact, you know, uh, now there's a broad definition for happiness. No? Here simply, I mean the pleasure, pleasure the person has. When it comes to happiness, you know, there are so many things. You don't need happiness, without you money, happiness, subject to well-being, object to so many things. Anyway, I'm not making you confused, but simply let us define this, you know. Uh, the pleasure that the person gets, that's a very, very narrow thing. This is not the happiness of the life. Simply, uh, you know, because of the work, the, the, the pleasure that the employee draws. Uh, let us uh, give a working definition like that. Of course, if you want to have a link between work, vacation, benefits, and happiness, you can have no problem. Even working conditions and happiness, no problem. Or even, uh, yes, even, uh, you know, here, happiness leads to morale. You can have a vice versa also. Morale of the employees leads to happiness. No problem. You know, reverse causation. That is called reverse causation. You can have, but anyway, you can have all these things, but you must have, you know, supporting evidence. You must have a very good stand. Otherwise, you know, your conceptual framework, just like a foundation, you know, for a good home, your foundation should be strong. Then no problem. Also, you know, you know, you may not be interested in all the linkages, you know. This is a PhD thesis that has to be done within at least four years or three and a half. Also, maybe you may have some other variables for which there are no instruments to measure. Then purposefully you have to, you know, remove certain variables, certain relationships. But anyway, it is up to you. Okay, then side income, you know, now tell me, how does side income, can, can, you, can you describe, and then can you explain, how does side income moderate the relationship between pay and happiness? You know, the happiness, you know, happiness, happiness has a positive impact on the relationship between pay and morale of the employee. That's why happiness is a, Mediating variable. Then the side didn't come. If it is a moderating variable, that must have a contingent effect on the relationship between pay and happiness. That means side income should cancel when it appears, should cancel the relationship between pay and happiness. Because of pay, you know. Okay, here the, the you know, increased pay will not, you know, will not make employees happy because they have side income. They don't care about the increased pay. That may be 1,000, that may be 2,000, but the side income, the value may be 2 lakhs, 3 lakhs. Then they don't care about the pay even. But pay will really, you know, make uh, uh, employees happy provided that those employees do not have side income. Now, this is how you have to theorize, you know. What I'm, you know, what I'm doing is, you must have a good understanding about the role of moderating variable, the role of mediating variable, the role of dependent variable, the role of independent variable. You can change, you know. You can have a, you know, with the same variables, you, you can develop a different theoretical framework, no problem. As long as if you have a good rationale. Otherwise, of course, it is a problem.
I'm, I'm searching one good paper, you know, still I couldn't. This, uh, <clears throat> so anyway, okay, let me do that later. Right, taking time. Okay, then, uh, <clears throat> now I'm going to give you a very, okay, before that, this one, another good example, exercise. Let us try to do that. Then I will give you a very difficult scenario. After this, this is also somewhat difficult. You try. You got uh, you got the this one, you know. So let me search one paper. In the meantime, Family counselor, right. <clears throat> uh, family counselor engaged in counseling married couples who are both professional. He's caught in a dilemma or dilemma. He realizes that the focus of counseling session should be on both family satisfaction and job satisfaction. However, he's not sure how job and family satisfactions can be integrated in the dual career family. What is dual career family? There are different types of families, you know, single career uh, family, traditional career family, dual career family. Do you know the differences? So traditional career family is a family where husband, only husband is working. Only the husband is the breadwinner. Wife is a home, wife and wife doesn't work. That's a traditional, you know, uh, family. Then uh, single career family, you know, the one person has a job, maybe husband or maybe wife, then the other person, the spouse has a career. What is the difference between a career and a job? What is the difference between a career and a job? Career has several jobs. You know, an outstanding career can have almost all the jobs relating to that field. You know, the person who retired with an illustrious career, you know, can have so many jobs or many or several jobs at least, several jobs performed throughout his or her employment life. So if you expect, if you, if you, want to have a career, uh, then there are, so, you know, you want to get many promotions, if not many, several, you know, considerable number of promotions. Career for a university academic, you know, from assistant lecturer to senior professor. Uh, that's a career. For a human resource manager, from, uh, you know, HR executive to a uh, group human resource manager or deputy general manager human resource. That's a career with, you know, uh, HR executive, junior HR executive, then senior HR executive, then senior HR executive, then assistant human resource manager, then human resource manager, then uh, group human resource manager, assume. Uh, that's the career. Okay, so the uh, career is like that. But job is simply, is, is a job, you know, that may be, uh, junior clerk, that may be senior clerk, that's a job consisting of tasks, duties, and responsibilities to achieve a certain objective. Right, then dual career couple, what do you mean? Both husband and wife want to have careers. 
more, more, you know. So therefore, it is very difficult, most difficult, uh, I mean, the, the highest level of difficulty in achieving balance between work life and family life is in case of dual career couple. The lower difficulty is in case of traditional uh, couple. Okay, I think you can understand. Any questions you can raise. Then the husbands who are the traditional breadwinners seem to derive more job satisfaction as they get more involved in their jobs and also spend more discretionary time on job-related activities. This, however, does not seem to be true in the case of wives who perform the dual role of career person and homemaker. However, both husbands and wives seem to enjoy high levels of family satisfaction when they spend more time together at home and help each other in planning family-oriented activities. Uh, there come, you know, somewhat difficult scenario, situation. There has, uh, you know, a set of variables. So it state what the problem definition of the researcher identify the variables involved and the label. Then I do this alone. Okay, you try, you know, we will save time. So I will show you the answer. This is the answer. <clears throat> Let me show first the theoretical framework. Here there are two frame frameworks. Job involvement, discretionary time of time on job activities, they will lead to job satisfaction. The gender behaves as a moderator. This doesn't fall through to uh, female employees. Then time is spent together, help each other in planning family-oriented activities. They will lead to family satisfaction. Or you can have again another, you know, uh, no problem. You can <clears throat> you can have a linkage like this also. But there must be a, uh, at least one sentence for that in the scenario, or vice versa. This way also. Even you can introduce a moderate, you know, intervening variable mediator here. You can introduce. I don't know, you can try. Here also you can include, no problem. You can take separately, you know, Job involvement, another mediating variable, then job satisfaction. Discretionary time on job activities, another mediating variable, then job satisfaction. You can make it more complex, no problem. If you have right rationally, then no problem. But you have to think of the possibility also, feasibility. And that we show the <clears throat> okay. Some uh, with regard to the earlier earlier one, this one. Let me take this one. Then now let me ask. You know, <clears throat> let me uh, give examples of uh, research questions, specific research questions. Does the variable of working conditions, you know? relate to morale of the employees positively? That's a research question. 
does pay does pay increase morale of the employees another research question or does pay have a, you know does pay uh, or yes does pay uh, have a positive relationship on morale of the employees then does happiness you know have or is happiness an intervening or mediating variable on the relationship between pay and morale of the employees does side, does side income have a contingent impact on the relationship between pay and happiness or is side income a, a moderator on pay happiness linkage so likewise you know we can develop research questions then we can develop you know objectives accordingly points okay if you should okay this is do improving working conditions and increase in vacation benefits and pay increase the morale of employees we can break this into three also as you know the third question is this does improving working conditions increase the morale of the employees then an objective relating to this to investigate whether to investigate whether improving with the improving working conditions increases the morale of the employees uh, that is an objective with regard to this one so therefore research question should be consistent with the objective objective should be in line with the research question there is no big deal you know if you are intelligent or instead of you know maybe to to investigate maybe to find out to find out the relationship then between improving working conditions and the morale of employees find out the relationship we can even you know then the hypothesis you know relating to this one the hypothesis you know you can have like this let me say you know take uh, for improving working condition let me uh, give the symbol a for easiness and then the a is related to b uh, this is a hypothesis a declarative statement declarative state then let me let me improve the hypothesis a is positively related to b uh, this is a directional hypothesis earlier one is a non directional hypothesis a directional hypothesis shows the direction whether it is negative or positive the nature of the relationship then statistically you know you have to have one tail test you know the statistical technique to test the relation you know test the hypothesis is product moment correlation assume the level of the measurements of the variables interval the level of the measurement of a is interval the level of the measurement of b is interval then product moment correlation is the relevant technique to test the hypothesis according to the experts in statistics and then we have to have one tail test 
because the hypothesis is directional. Then if the hypothesis is non-directional, we have to have two-tail test. You know, so there are, there are implications statistically also. Now let me, you know, write the same, you know, A, you can have like this, A has a relationship with B. Same thing. A and B are related. Same thing. Same thing. Related. Same thing. Another way, you know, when A increases, B tends to increase. You see, there are many ways of writing the hypothesis. If you are intelligent, you can do that. It's not a big deal. It's not a very difficult thing that you can, you know, master, you can get, you can learn. Even if you are interested uh, in impact, uh, then A impacts B. Then you can, if you, you know, if you want to make it directional, positively. Okay, so then, uh, same thing, you know, A has a positive impact on B. Same thing. Same thing. Okay, now, how do you write a hypothesis, you know, in case of a mediating variable? A. Assume mediating variable is C. C has a mediating effect. Mediating effect on the relationship between A and B. Okay, same thing, C has a mediating, mediating effect or impact on A and B linkage. Okay, so then, uh, okay, let us take this one. Job performance, you know, take this. Uh, job performance is a very big variable. Very important variable in management. Irrespective of the field of specialization, HRM, finance, marketing, anything. Job performance is a very important variable. You know, the situation one, job performance as a, as a dependent variable as a dependent variable. You see, competency of employees, job performance of employees. So in this scenario, job performance as a dependent variable. Go to situation two. Job satisfaction of employees, job performance of employees. Here, job performance as an independent variable. As an independent variable, job performance as an independent variable. This affects this one. This, you know, determines the behavior of this one. Okay, now go to situation uh, three. Job performance as an intervening variable. As an intervening variable. Job enrichment. What is job enrichment? In simple, you know, giving more authority for planning and controlling the job to the relevant employee. That is job enrichment. Increasing, you know, legal power to make decisions, to use resources, to give orders to others, to obey. Job enrichment, right. 
increasing the power for planning the job and also controlling the job. Uh, that is job enrichment. So when we increase job enrichment, job performance will get increased. Because of increased job performance, there will be increased business performance. Therefore, this positively affects this one, which positively affects this one. So this occurs as, you know, at, at, at time two. This occurs at time three. This occurs at time one. Therefore, job performance works as a function of the independent variable that is job enrichment. Okay, job performance as an intervening variable. Now look at this situation. Job performance as a moderating variable. Job performance as a moderating variable. Employee competency and his so her career development are positively related. Okay, this is the once I told you, no, previously I told you there must be two variables. One is independent, one is dependent. Then, you know, we have to establish a previous relationship between the two variables. What is that? Employee competency and career development. So, when employee competency increased, or get increased or increases, employee career development will get increased. But it doesn't occur if there is no job performance which is expected. Therefore, job performance, assume your competency has increased, but your career development did not occur because your job performance was not right, not in the way that is expected by the manager. Only, you know, Job uh, employee competency will lead to employee career development only if you have right job performance. Understood? Did you understand this one? This is a very good uh, exercise. If not very good, this is a good exercise to understand that the same variable can work as a dependent variable can work at an independent variable, can work as a moderating variable, can work as an intervening variable. So it is up to you. It depends on the research. Uh, basically, basically, the primarily depends on the gaps which you have identified. Okay, now let, let me tell you, okay. There are many studies done and which show job performance as a dependent variable. There are several studies done uh, showing job performance as an independent variable or taking job performance as an independent variable. There are also few studies done uh, job, uh, taking job performance as an intervening variable, but there is no single study done. Uh, then you can consider that is a gap. That is a gap for your research then you can consider job performance as a moderating variable. Then you can you know, argue, you can tell that the, the relationship between job performance and something else, or the impact of A, B, A, B and C on, sorry, sorry, job performance, you know, the, the, okay, you can say the, the moderating effect of job performance on the relationship between A and uh, B, has not been theoretically argued. Okay. So that becomes a theoretical gap, is it? Okay, okay, let me say very good. Okay, thank you for your involvement. The moderating impact of uh, job performance has not been uh, theoretically argued. What does this mean? That means, you know, you can't find a paper telling that, telling that uh, job performance has worked as a moderating variable, you know, uh, cancelling the relationship between two variables. You can't find any paper as you generally, or you can't find any textbook that talks about that. And then you can say moderating impact of job uh, performance 
of course on the relationship between a and b assume you know a and b so a is independent variable these uh, b is dependent okay this this paper you know published in a so called scopus index journal so then the here the variables you know lecturer competence is one variable student satisfaction of lecturing another variable then the mediate role of lecturing behavior get get familiarized with the three variables lecturing is a familiar familiar thing now to you everyone here since your basic degree you have been you know listening to lectures so then competence of student satisfaction lecture competence one variable student satisfaction of lecturing another variable then the role of oh sorry lecturing behavior is another variable so in this study for the first time you know i got you know i consider lecturing behavior as a mediating variable you know that gap is locally as well as internationally let me show you uh somewhere you know the <clears throat> right okay here you know i have mentioned all the relevant previous studies then finally i came to this one this is the paragraph which shows directly the linkage sorry the gap gap okay there's a limitation of increasing because of that formatting uh this is not my my word file the you know the, the the relevant journal's word file so thus previous studies did not focus on the mediating effect of lecture in behavior on explaining the relationship between lecturer competence and student satisfaction of lecturing it reveals that how lecture in behavior mediates the relationship between lecturer competence and student satisfaction of lecturing has not been theoretically argued also it reveals that a lack of sufficient evidence for lecturing behavior as an intervening or mediating variable in the research archives the history of the research archives hence evidence is required to ensure the mediating impact of lecturing behavior on the relationship between the lecturer competence and student satisfaction of lecturing uh, that is the need of this paper you know so i uh, okay so evidence is needed so this paper was conducted to give a kind of evidence then this is indeed particularly with reference to mba students in the sri lankan context this research intends to fill that gap and provide information so like why okay so then you can see the the relevant research questions and then objectives you know which were formulated based on research questions so these are the objectives for objectives then look at the theoretical framework so you have to you know a uh, theoretical framework is this one so you can see here lecture competence lecture behavior student satisfaction of lecture this is mediating variable you can see hypothesis you know h2 that is the second hypothesis h4 that is the fourth hypothesis h3 that the, that the third hypothesis so h1 the first hypothesis so then the rationale is there by using general theories and all this empirical evidence logical beliefs theoretical arguments however remember after developing this you know each variable you have to conceptualize before i mean before developing this schematic diagram you can conceptualize or after developing this di diagram you can conceptualize my advice is before coming to that you can conceptualize look at this paper you know conceptualizing of each variable was done before developing that theoretical framework one advantage is then you are pretty sure about the meaning of the concept 
you know about you know meaning of the concept meaning of the variable uh, so look at you know my working definition adapting from this definition like you know so baseless definition the lecturer competence can be defined as the lecturer's capability or ability of performing the tasks of delivering lectures in the classroom successfully not like here you know the zoom so my working definition was relating to traditional teaching setting so lecturer competence or that's working definition or lecturer behavior this is the working definition this one so i develop my own working definitions if you are very intelligent you can do that i mean conceptual you know that is called conceptual competence if you are lacking then you can get the help from the supervisor if the supervisor is lacking then okay better to get a definition already developed by a good scholar quality scholar then you can justify why you have taken that definition for your study then you have to give you know several definitions given by several uh, authors and then you have to you know choose one and then you have to uh, give the justification for that choice then no problem maybe one reason it is easy to understand maybe another reason i really want to study this aspect so this 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 definition considers or uh, is concerned with that aspects also but other definitions do not or they are not concerned with therefore this is a better definition as far as the purpose of my study is concerned so likewise you have to justify or or another justification maybe all other definitions were foreign definitions uh, developed by uh, you know developed in of uh, developed situations but uh, this definition is a local definition so that uh, suits uh, that has a, a better so i mean better matching with the local condition therefore i decided to choose this or the researcher decided to choose this definition another reason under justification all right okay so you can see the hypothesis and then you start design then instruments uh, those those are you know the operationalizations okay i am not focusing on that today right now time is 4:30 without getting a break we came to 4:30 also okay then let me uh, finish theoretical hypothesis can be derived from the conceptual then rationally is a must by using these things even hunch you know earlier many years ago that was acceptable right then thank you best wishes any questions thank you sir, thank you, sir. sir uh, thank you, sir. Um, there is a uh, proposal sir that whether uh, we would like to know whether we would we can have this lecture on the morning so is that possible because usually the evenings we we used to you know experience this raining but the morning is more or less very clean um, uh, but uh, you, you, uh, i think you have morning lectures don't you uh, no this sundays we didn't have any morning lectures ah i i was not informed about that no i could have done really i see i was Shall not informed by the, the, the coordinator okay then okay. next time if you if you don't have morning lectures on next saturday there no problem i can have a lecture next from uh, starting with uh, 8:30 or 9 8:30 should be okay sir 8:30 oh sorry 9 8:30 sir 8:30 should be okay sir Next week we will start at eight thirty. No problem. Okay, sir. Thank you, Thank sir. You, sir. Thank you. Okay, then wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.